Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, we are back with the Prince of Investment right here live on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm your host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dice, coming to you guys all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado. And uh, we've been broadcasted out of the beautiful state of Honolulu, Hawaii. But as always, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And stay tuned for more. As always, I don't have a lot of time. I definitely you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So on this video, as you can see in the description box, I'm going to give you at least five topics or five ways or five tips of how to help or create a budget or teach your kids about budgeting. The reason why budgeting is so important, first I want to talk about the importance. The reason why it's so important is if you can't maintain a budget, you can't invest. Of course we love to invest. Of course we love to put money in places and things like that. But we first have to maintain and understand a simple budget. We all know this as an adult. If you're not an adult yet, you listen to the show. Yes, as you're making money, you're going to have bills. You're going to have expenses. You're going to have wants, needs, and desires, right? But with that, with that being said, in order for you to invest, you will have to have some type of budget. For example, I make $500. I have to pay for lights, water, gas, insurance, whatever. And then I'm going to, uh, what you call it, and then I'm going to put money to the side. So the great Warren Buffett said that first, pay yourself first before you pay your bills. So for a prime example, most people say, I don't have the money or I can't save because I got too many bills. Pay thyself first. I think that was in uh, The Richest Man in Babylon as well. So first, let's go down to my handy-dandy list. The first thing is set, an, set a, an example. One, set the example and do it together. Set the example with your child. For a prime example, say, hey, uh, like take a look at my son, Wesley. Hey, listen, I have a clear jar. These are my savings. This is mom and dad's savings. Wesley, this is your jar for your savings. When we get paid, they watch me save, and then he puts money into his jar, so he saves. So we're doing it together, and he's actually getting a chance to see us with a clear jar. A clear jar, you can see how much money is building and accumulating over time. So when he sees mom and dad's doing it, it may, be coming to a, it may turn into some type of competition of, hey, I want, I want my jar to be more, I want my jar to be uh, bigger, anything like something like that. The second thing is while you're doing that, while you guys are working together, Create the budget together. Sit down and say, hey, this is what we're going to do, this is X, Y, Z. I'm going to save $2. You're going to save $1. It doesn't have to be your real savings plan, but we're kind of setting up something to where they know the importance of a savings plan, right? So that's the first thing you can do. Get a clear jar, do it together, match each other, right? Number two, make them work for their money. I know we all think about allowance and things like that or whatnot, but for prime example, when they, uh, you ask them to go outside and say, hey, I want you to clean the car. If you wash the car this weekend, I'll give you five bucks. If you, um, outside of your daily chores, not just giving them money just because they're who they are, when they do some little extra, you give them a little extra. Hey, sweep off the driveway, I'll give you, you know, a dollar to sweep off the driveway. Wesley, come down to my office, clean my office. You know, I would ask him, hey, I want you to clean my office. How much are you going to charge me? You know, he'll say five cents or something like that because he don't understand all the way. And I take pure advantage. <laughs> so he would say, I do a day for five cents. I'm like, deal. We got a deal. We shake on it. He cleans my office. I give him his five cents. So he sees where this money is coming from. He sees that I have to do something. I have to do something in order to get this money. So sometimes parents love to give allowance. If you want to give an allowance, great, put an allowance. But I want you to also think of the concept of, you know, working for it, making them work for it. Now he knows I had to do something in order to get this money because we all know when you become an adult, the money is not going to be handed to you. Not At least not for some of us, not for the majority of us. And if it is handed to you, contact me because I'd like to hand it to me too. All right, so let's jump into number three. Now, when we do this, we want to uh, show them the cost of stuff. When they want things, I want them to see the cost of it. For prime example, Wesley, he doesn't really understand how much money is 
equals to what? So number three, let them see the cost. Hey, you offered to clean my office for five cents, but what you're asking for, you would like an ice cream. Ice cream, a cup of ice cream costs $2. You don't have enough money. So now he understands the money that I make from cleaning my dad's office is not enough to buy ice cream. So now he has to ask for more money. He understands that, hey, I have to ask for more money. I have to save up to get something or whatever the case may be. All right? So now he knows, hey, maybe I should ask for $2 because with $2 I can buy ice cream. Or maybe I ask for $3 because I can save a dollar and have some ice cream. Those type of things. So I'm teaching him how to negotiate. And, you know, I'm not going to tell him, I want him to understand that people will take advantage of you. So you have to be smart enough to not uh, be taken advantage of and be responsible and be responsible as well. So let them see how much it costs. Don't just say, hey, well, I just buy you this. They think money falls out of the sky. I want them to understand, hey, this is how much your work and what labors off your costs. Great way to learn about uh, budgeting. Another thing, number four, the jars, right? This is when you place the jars together. And what I mean by you place the jars together is, for prime example, just don't have one jar for say. We all know that's what you can't do. I had a deep conversation today with some students at Gateway High School. Thank you for Gateway High School for bringing me in. And um, what we spoke about was if you continue to save right now, what is the national high on a savings account? It's roughly around about 1.25 according to bankrate.com the last time I checked. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. But I'm pretty sure it's in that ballpark. I know my account is not getting 0.25 on a savings account, right? So you have to understand, well, that's, that's not the whole picture. You just can't say you must do something else with your money. First, no matter if you're an adult, you have some form of bills, whether it's a phone bill, a car note, mortgage, rent, anything. You have some form of bills. So first, when he's earning his money, they must understand, I must first pay my bills, right? Two, well, not first pay your bills, but first pay for yourself or pay your bills. Either way, some people say, hey, you know, I want to get my savings off the top. Some people say, hey, pay your bills. I want my son to know, hey, you must pay your bills because if you don't pay your bills, it goes onto your credit. And if you don't pay, you know, if your credit is messed up, now it affects you getting a job or uh, it affects you for business loans, getting a house, car, anything else like that, right? So bad juju. So first, you must understand, as an adult, you must pay bills. Second, you must save some money. Third, you must uh, invest. You have to learn to invest. Because like I was, the point I was getting at, savings account is getting about 0.20 or something like that. But you, got, you have to look at it on the same notion that with the savings account being so low, you have to also understand inflation, inflation. You don't see inflation, so people don't think about it, right? And I told, you know, you got to think about purchasing power. If I was right now here in 2018 to dig a hole in my backyard, put $1,000 in my backyard, let it sit there for 20 years. 20 years later, how much money would be there? $1,000, right? Then let's say 20 years from now in 20, what's that, 2038? In 2038, I go walk to the store, go to buy stuff. Do you think I'm going to be able to buy more or less? Probably less, right? The reason why I'm going to be able to buy less is because of inflation. The value of money continues to fall. The price of goods and services continue to go up. So as the price of services continue to go up, 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 you know, I no longer, I can't buy the things I used to buy. If you take $200 today and you take $200 20 years ago, both of them went into um, a grocery store, both of them are money still spend, you're going to be able to buy less and less and less. And you're buying less and less and less due to inflation. Now, what is inflation percentage? How fast does inflation move? Right now, they try to uh, maintain the Federal Reserve. They want to maintain the Federal uh, inflation between 2 to 3% or something like that. Last year in 2017, I think it was about 2%. So when you're looking at inflation moving at that type of rate, what people are trying to do, they're trying to keep inflation to be modernized. People don't think about it because 
Nobody knocks on your door and say, hey, hey, let me have 2% this year because of inflation. You, you can't really see it. You know, you just go to the store and things cost a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, and you don't understand why. So that's the thing you must understand is with uh, inflation. Now, uh, you must beat it. You must match it. So you can't just save your money. You just can't pay your bills and save and think you're going to get ahead because the, the current interest rate society we're in now is not favorable for a saver. You're saving 2%. But then, you, I mean, you're saving and getting 20, 25 cents, but then Uncle Sam's inflation is coming and take $2 every year. You have a negative 0.75, right? So you can't win that way. You must put your money somewhere, invest it somehow to where you can at least match or beat inflation. You know, you have, you know, maybe it could be cryptocurrencies. Maybe it could be, uh, you know, maybe it could be cryptocurrency, the stock market, real estate, renting out a house. All types of things you can do. Now, the next thing you want to do, number five, the matching system, right? You pay out a dollar. Give the kid a dollar, your son, your daughter, nephew, whatever the case may be, you give them a dollar. They say, hey, if you don't spend that dollar, if you bring me that dollar back next year, whatever you got in your savings by the end of the year, I'm going to match it. By the end of the year, if you have $50 in your savings account, I'm going to match that $50. It's kind of get them in the notion of you guys working together and also getting them prepared for it. They go into the employee world and they, and they work somewhere where they have the uh, government matching. A lot of us have matching systems, but a lot of us don't know how to take advantage of the matching systems. We don't know how to take advantage of the matching systems because we don't understand, uh, we don't even know what it is. We don't even know the power of it. We don't understand, oh, every dollar I put in, they're going to match, but then they're going to invest. Some people don't know, and they don't take advantage of it. So by you matching them, end of the year, whatever you have in that jar, I'm going to double it. You got $100 in there? I'm going to put $100. Second, you're giving them a reward. You're giving something to them for them looking forward to it, right? And you're, you're and I know some people may say, well, you're just giving them money. But what I'm trying to do is mimic what interest is, teaching them what interest is. Hey, look, I'm going to give you 50% of whatever you was able to save. Whatever you save by the end of the year, what's in this jar, jar we'll count it. If you have $100, I'm going to give you $50. If you have $100, I'm going to give you $100. Whatever thing you're doing, you want to reward them and say, hey, this is what its interest costs. Now you're getting into the, the next lesson, which is very important, which is now you're able to teach them the value of uh, compounding interest. For example, let's say one year they save $100. You count it out, you save the $100. Say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to match you with the $100. Boom. Now they have $200. Let's say by the end of next year, they were able to save $50. Now they have $250. Now you're going to say, hey, look, last year you had $100 worth of interest that I'm going to pay you interest on top of again. And now they're watching their money grow. You know, yes, we can throw money into an account and buy a stock, but they don't see it. But when they send their money physically grow, we're teaching them and we're showing them, hey, look, boom, boom, boom. Your money is particularly growing, right? Your money is particularly growing. Your money is getting uh, growing. Mom and dad is helping you out. You're collecting interest. So it's, hey, the more money you put in this jar, the more money mom and dad put in this jar. So when they get older, they understand the more money I put into my bank account or the more money I invest, the more money that grows, a.k.a. dividends, a.k.a. interest, a.k.a. compounding interest. You want to let them see and understand and know the power of compounding interest, right? And that's the way to do it. So let's go. Let's do a recap. The first one, set an example and do it together. Set an example. Do it with them. Just don't say, hey, this is your piggy bank. Whatever the case, great, they have a piggy bank, but make it a clear jar so they can see their money growing. Two, mom and dad has one too. This is mom and dad saving. They see mom and dad saving in their big clear jar. That's, you know, your son, daughter, niece, and nephew, or whatever the case may be, they're doing it as well. So you're setting an example and you're telling them, hey, $5 a week, or whatever the case may be, this is what we put into our jar. They're doing it. You're doing it together. They're building the habit because they say, 
I always saw my mom and dad do it. I always did it, things like that. That's step one. Number two, an allowance slash work. Some people pay their parents, uh, some people pay their kids an allowance, some of them pay them, uh, pay them by work. Once they do their baseline chores, uh, let them understand, hey, Tuesday's not gonna pay you just for existing, you have to do something for your money. Pay them with an allowance. So as you pay them, hey, uh, as you clean the office, or as you clean my room, as you do whatever the case would be, I'm gonna pay you. As that person is being paid, or as they are being paid, you turn around, as they're being paid, you um, they can able they can be able to save, right? They know I had to do something in order to earn this money. I just didn't just wake up and boom, you're just dropping money in my piggy bank. I had to clean the office in order to get this money, right? So paying them allowance. Uh, three, kind of piggyback off once, using the clear jars and having set jars, not just one big savings jar, but let them know. In life, there's more to it than just saving. One, you got to pay your bills because you got to pay to live. Jar number two, this is your savings jar. Jar number three, this is your investing jar. Because we just went over, you just can't save your way to investing. You have to set back. And you have to pay your. You have to invest your money some type of way. So that's the three ways. That's number three. Number four. Let them know how much stuff costs. Right now, I'm trying to teach Wesley the value of money. He doesn't really understand you know, how much money would ever cost. I say, Wesley, want to clean my room? He wants to clean it for five cents. He cleans it. He doesn't really understand, but let him see, hey, you clean my room for five cents, but this ice cream costs $2. You don't have enough money. You have to save up for it, or you have to make more money. You have to maybe clean more things. You have to do more things in order to get this. Let him see the cost of money. Let him go to renegotiate his contract his verbal contract, to see can he negotiate for more money and to let him see, wow, five cents is not that valuable because I can't even get ice cream with it. You must understand that. Now he understands how much things cost and what he had to do to get the money. Number five, match them. Match them with what they're doing. Hey, maybe it'd be a 10% match, 50% match, 20% match. Maybe you match them monthly, but you want them to understand the concept of interest. When I put money in this jar, I get interest. For a prime example, um, you may have a matching plan in a 401k. Uh, your banks give you interest on a savings account, a CD, or a bond, or stock pays dividends. You want to let them know by saving, you earn more money. You can match them. At the end of the year, hey, in your piggy bank, we count all the money. You got $50. Boom, here's another $50. Now you have $100. And when you're teaching them, when you're matching them every year like that, you're showing them the power of compounded interest. In the example we use, they save $50, you add in $50, they now have 100 Next year, let's say in that same pile, they have $110. Now they're being matched on 110 because $50 of that is already interest. So now they're, they're making money off of the interest to the powerful thing called compounded interest, a.k.a. my money is making money. Right? So those are the five things. The five things, set an example, uh, pay them with an allowance of work, the three different jars, four, uh, how much stuff costs, five, match them, match them, doing it all together. And those are five good tips on teaching your kids, managing budget. Now they know how to manage their money. Now they have the possibility and the opportunity to be able to invest. Because if you can't manage your money, most people don't have the money to invest because they don't they don't know how to manage their particular money. So those are five ways to teach your kids how to do it. Five, can you see my hand? That's five ways to how to do it. But as always, I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. As always, my name is Prince Dykes. Every, every week, bi-weekly, or check me out on The Investor Show on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, iHeartRadio, all those type of things. Follow the Investor Show. Once again, until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.